Greetings and welcome to the Saco City Council meeting for Monday, March 21st, 2022. Call the meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. I'll let the record reflect that all the city councilors are present. I'd like to invite you all to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, under General this evening, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Save Our Shores, Saco Bay, for collaborating with the uh, program this morning. Uh, the third annual symposium was held here in City Hall Chambers, uh, and it was a well-attended and a well-informative event. So thank you very much to uh, President Kevin Roach and Vice President David Blavin. With that, uh, we are at item five, committee correspondence to council. Any committee correspondence at this time? Councilor Berman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Saco Conservation Commission has developed a green space checklist, uh, noting that the charter tasks them with conducting research on local land uses and orders them to provide environmental and technical assistance to the review of development proposals in front of our planning board. Uh, they decided that they needed to set criteria by which uh, potential conservation land could be evaluated. So at the last meeting, uh, they developed a draft of such criteria, and it will come to various city boards, groups, and staff members, including uh, city council, in the future uh, for review. Thank you. Any further committee correspondence to council? Moving on to item six, public comment. First up is Peter Scontras. For those coming up to the podium, uh, please... Uh, Three minutes and you speak directly into the microphone so everyone can hear you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a pleasure to stand here before you all, but especially the four former students of mine and a parent of three of my former students. So I'm connected to seven of you somehow. I don't know how that ever happened, but here I am. Uh, Mr. Mayor and esteemed members of the Saco City Council, Thank you for the privilege of speaking before you this evening. Initiatives that I have been developing for the past several years are important for the betterment and more complete understanding of our beloved city of Saco. Last I talked with the mayor in December 2020, I was pleased to hear that the council was progressing with the city historian's description and responsibilities. The mayor told me in early 2020 that he would appoint me as Saco City's historian after all the codification, if that's the right word, was approved. Based on that conversation, I continued to formulate the details of establishing programs for both Saco's and Bitterford schools, including Saco's general public and visitors to our beautiful city. I have planned four routes for guided tours within Saco, and I'm working on transportation issues relative to a fifth tour route. I would ask that we work together in developing a flyer describing the options of five tours and salient talking points. I would not accept compensation, as that's the least I can do for the city I love so dearly. Sorry. I expressed my plan to the mayor shortly after his election in 2020. The bulk of what I discussed with him and the general description of the expectations and responsibilities of a city historian that you approved are there. He told me then my thoughts had to be codified and that after its approval by the city council, he would appoint me to the position of Saco City Historian. I was pleased that you passed that codified language, city council and Mr. Mayor, in the spring of 2021. However, as mentioned, the mayor has not further discussed that with me since that December of 2020. Commitment is necessary to retain Saco and Bitterford's youngest lifelong residents of their native cities. To reach that end, I have been actively developing an interesting local studies curriculum the past three and a half years after the mayor's commitment to me. I anticipate presenting it to superintendents, curriculum specialists, school boards of both communities. In developing this, I have received assistance over the years from some of Saco's valued local historians. Roy Fairfield was perhaps the most eminent soccer historian of our time. And he and I had many conversations, and he trained me to be the soccer, uh, soccer city historian when my time came. Before passing at age 99, Roy and I discussed how and what to incorporate in our soccer studies program within our schools, including Thornton Academy. Although, also, 84-year-old Sally Hewitt, eminent soccer historian, said to me today, 
that she definitely supports my candidacy for Saco City Historian and is pleased that I'm working with both communities. The City Historian's position carries leverage and credibility necessary so that innovative programs can be established. My reputation as an educator and a scholar in Saco is impeccable. Any counselor who is a former student of mine can testify about my love for them as students then and support of them as com committed Saco citizens today. The Maine Institution of Middle Level Education awarded me an exemplary practice award for my teaching. Some of you don't know that because you don't know me. My public record is an open slate. The only part of that of which I am most disappointed because of the standards I hold for myself is my time on the planning board. Never have I disappointed myself to the extent that I did during my time on that soccer planning board. My service was way below my personal standards, and I'm available if you would to like to discuss that with me in executive session. I have served on several committees and commissions. I won't go into it now because I don't have the time. Of course, I would be willing as Saco's, city's, Saco's city historian to present lectures and slideshows to Saco's organization and groups, to the city council and administrators throughout the city, and to attend and present at conferences throughout the country, as I have did when I was teaching, as I believe that my skill set, experience, and network of pertinent contacts will serve and honor our beloved city well. I've been taught by the best and wish to apply all of it to Saco's needs. Lastly, former students who visit the Wayway store frequently thank me for teaching them how to be a better writer and adult by modeling the life lessons that enable them to be happy according to their ability level. Lastly, my former students encouraged me to keep up my effort in the study and teaching of Sarko's history as they already benefited so much. I hope I will be given the opportunity to do that until my dying breath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the extra time, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, up next is Kelly Archer. And again, uh, just please state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Archer of 185 Bradley Street. Uh, I, I surprise. I was here to just yield my time to Peter if he went over. So thank you very much for giving him that time. And I support everything that Inga has brought forward to you in her letter and uh, Jane and myself. And I thank you for this time. Thank you. Up next is Jane Karen. Good evening, Jane Karen, 264 Lincoln Street in Saco. And I um, ask that Peter Scontris um, be supported as the first uh, city historian for the city of Saco. I think his experience and historic knowledge is a gift to us. And um, it's almost as though he's a landmark himself. So. Please consider that. And the downtown district 1,500 foot requirement that's on the agenda, please consider that that has to be fully vetted, um, including parking, traffic, and so forth, before lowering that requirement of square footage. And I support Inga's letter and concerns about um, the left-hand turn for um, Saco. And then also, I ask for the city's support on the purchase of a dredge, the, the support letter for the purchase of a dredge for Camp Ellis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next is Inga Brown. Good evening. Uh, Inga Brown, 161 Simpson Road. I have several items to bring forward this evening. I fully support the city sending the letter in this evening's packet to the York County Commissioners regarding the purchase of dredge equipment that could be acquired with ARPA funds. I think our coastal erosion is one of our community's top priorities. I would like to share my support this evening for the appointment of city historian in the name of Mr. Peter Scontras. Mr. Scontras fully deserves our community's support on this nomination. He deserves your support here this evening and I'd like to see action on his delayed appointment. 
I do not support changing the minimum lot area for the downtown dimensional standards based on the zoning petition of one developer. The entire process for this agenda item has been fraught with issues of poor process. And I'd like to see a fair and robust discussion occur on this item with wider community stakeholders, including more residents of the downtown district. Mayor Doyle, I do not approve of your actions on March 7th of posing contrived and leading questions to the city planner on the topic of dimensional standards. I believe you should have relinquished your chair in order to present your personal thinking and opinions instead of masking them through a list of leading questions that you read from your notepad. I would like to direct support and approval for council to make a motion to place contract zone ordinance review on the agenda for discussion at the next council meeting on March 28th. In action on this critical topic after a multitude of requests for it to be on the agenda is another symptom of a non-responsive closed door approach regarding setting of the agenda for council meetings. I know that all of you received a longer letter from me this week about poor process, and I hope that you took the time to read it. Regarding the turn lane for the ecology school, unfortunately, council, you've been operating in a vacuum. This is not your fault. You're simply not being given the information that you need about the turn lane. This is a very detailed site plan process agenda item. This is the site plan binder. Councillor Purdy, I appreciated your comment last meeting on March 7th when you pointed out that 112 is a state road and of course the DOT will be involved. Um, that really showed me very much how DOT is mentioned in the site plan process over and over for the turn lane. So you simply don't have access to the information that you need to make a good decision. When my time is over, I'd like to approach the dais. I do have a copy of the last traffic report from June 2018. I'd like to provide you the narrative portion. And in this report, uh, many pieces of information that you don't have are present. And I'd like to point out, it's not just that the ecology school is increasing traffic on Simpson Road. It is also the type of traffic. This traffic study details that a turning radius is needed for Buxton Road to Simpson Road the type of charter buses, the types of delivery trucks that the ecology school through a contract zone is uh, adding to Simpson Road is one of the reasons that this uh, independent peer review found that the turn lane was required. So in closing, I do want to point out that I take issue, Councillor Berman, I was very upset that you are um, philosophizing from your armchair about the traffic on Simpson Road, that perhaps because the bridge is open, this is creating traffic. That is simply not true. If you could please do your homework or ask city staff, to all of you, to provide you with the information that you need to make good decisions or to ask city staff to come forward when you have further questions on these items, I think the level of discourse and the level of um, clarity and facts would benefit all of us. So I'm going to urge you when this item comes back from the tabling to vote no on spending city money on a private developer's site plan condition of approval. And I'm also going to ask you to vote no on a complex, heavy subagreement in which city staff would be shouldering an enormous amount of work in uh, carrying out a BPI uh, funding mechanism for this particular item. So thank you for your attention. And if I may, I would like to just pass out that report. Thank you for the time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that is all for those that have signed up. If there's anyone wishing to speak to the council, please come forward and be heard. Uh, state your name and address for the record, please.
Good evening, Dan Lasky, uh, 23 Skyline Drive in Saco. Um, I just really feel very, very lucky to have the people that have just come up and spoken um, in the city and looking out for our best interest. And I just want to say that I'm in full agreement with what Kelly Acha has sent, uh, what Inga Brown has sent on March 16th and just has spoken so well tonight on, on the turn. It just to me that they had made an agreement to do it, so they need to follow through what they had agreed to do. Uh, with what Jane Karen had on March 19th um, on her several items. Um, also for Kevin Roach, I mean, I think it's, it's looking for the funds uh, the, for the, to support the letter of interest for York County to buy the dredge. Um, I'm 65 years old. I've lived in Saco for 60 of those years, and that's been an, an issue since I've lived here. And I think it's a very important, it's a, it's a big part of Saco and, and a popular part of Saco. Um, and then finally, in Peter Scontris, I mean, he is a true person in Saco that we, we really should cherish. And, and Mr. Mayor, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's, we have somebody willing to do it. Somebody would do a fantastic job, has already done a fantastic job. You have promised him the job. Um, counselors, I don't know what we're waiting for here. So He has also taught all three of my children. Um, and Peter, I would disagree. I thought you, um, you and many others did a great job on the planning board under some pretty tough circumstances. Um, I'm proud of what you did, and I think you should be also. And lastly, I, I, we're not really doing much here, guys. You guys really need, guys and girls, I'm sorry. Um, you, I'd like you to see, personally, take more charge, and, and you guys get some of your items on the agenda. Um, you've got you're very good people, you're smart people, you've got great ideas. Let's bring them out and Mr. Mayor, let them put their agenda items on there so we can get this city moving and get it, get it going forward. Um, it's not helping us. Um, we all need to work together and, and, and work for the best interests of the city of Saco. All right, thank you. Thank you. There's anyone else who Sue Littlefield, 171 Simpson Road. Um, this is going to be really brief. I, I support what everybody has said during this public comment period, and especially I will support Peter Scornchris. He really deserves the job. That's it for tonight. Thank you. Hello, uh, Kevin Roach, 18 Vines Road. Um, a side note, um, I wasn't preparing a speech, but um, I you know, congratulate Peter Scontras to be considered. Um, he'll forget, I forget, he'll forget more things about Saco than I'll ever remember. Um, so I just wanna um, just, just congratulate him, at least uh, to be this far with you guys. Um, I wanna thank, um, uh, first, the mayor and my counselor, Council Berman, for um, being part of key parts of our uh, Save Our Shores Saco Bay Symposium, um, and our vice president, uh, David Plavin, for uh, doing all the yeoman's work for it. Um, it's a lot, lot of um, uh, the reaction we already got back is um, the commitment that all levels of government in areas of the city. Uh, that support uh, these efforts. Um, on your agenda tonight is a letter of interest, letter of support. Uh, there's no funds on this, on this vote tonight. Um, it is to show um, we're getting York County uh, communities on board, and we, we just like to have um, Sacco's, um, you know, uh, interest to, to move things forward. Um, 
whether it becomes a host or or um, or other other funding is certainly greatly appreciated. But tonight, we would we just like to get that passed. Um, as many communities have already uh, passed, we have Kenny Bunk tomorrow. We have Kenny Bunk Port Thursday. Uh, we have three or four already um, committed to us. And then finally, um, these are big things, right? These are big items, and you know the items that are on uh, that have been discussed um, up here. Um, I'm concerned that you get bogged down into some things that really really don't have to be the hills to die on. I mean, really. I, you know, I have, I have only four years of experience. I know other counselors and school members have a lot of experience, but you know, you find yourself, you're gonna agree 75, 80% of the time, and then have those robust debates on the other 20, 25. I mean, one, one example of the many that are brought up is, is the contract zones. The contract zones, really, it's, on one side, you got to figure out what, what are we trying to vote on here, you know, because you don't want to burden counselors and staff with stuff that, that um, you know, should be worked out in the normal course of business. But, um, but on the other hand, you know, we kind of want the picture. I mean, it's, there's no harm to get something on there and debate. No harm. And if the vote is simply to have a speaker from the planning office or economic development come up here twice a year to give you an update, and so be it. Or discuss it in council comment, right in front of us here, or memos, or postings to the city, whatever the case may be. I just, I, I feel like you just get, you know, bogged down, and you know, maybe it's all of our fault. It's not on one mayor, it it's, might be me blabbing up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, but I'm just saying that, we got we to gotta get beyond this because we got big things. We got the new school, new school, the shoreline, and some, some news of economic development in, in the town. Those are the three biggies. And I'll credit this council and mayor if, if just one, if not all of them, I think, can get through. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else who would like to speak to the council, please come forward and be heard. Good evening, my name is Jeff Brochu from 257 Buxton Road. I wanted to touch on a couple items. I mean, I, I'm very much in support of, of the very eloquent people you heard earlier this evening. Um, downtown density, um, it was very, very heavily vetted and it would need to be re-vetted to, to do that. There's a lot of issues there. Um, I would hope that you would just find a, a negative vote until all those items could be truly ran through the process again. I sat on part of that zoning revision committee, um, and uh, it was a very long, grueling process with a lot of details brought forth. And uh, I would hope that maybe somebody from the council would consider, as I mentioned earlier um, in a previous meeting, bringing forth some sort of a, an, a, an amendment or an ordinance where after these major revisions take place, our zoning revision ordinance, our um, site plan standard ordinances, that you wouldn't entertain a modification from one petitioner within a one or two year period. The city spends so much money on these consultants, drafting these forms, running countless hours. Um, I just think it's not effective use of your time. Mr. Roach was talking about you being bogged down. This is a good example. We're throwing something on your agenda that was vetted by 30 members of the, of the community on different boards. Um, second. The, the dredge, I think I'm very much in support of getting the information. It's a letter to get more information in front of you. You can't make an informed decision without details. So I hope that you support that letter for a very important part of our community, kind of the cornerstone between the mills and our maritime history. Um, it's still, it's very important. I wish that you would at least support it to get the information to you to figure out what it may cost us long term. Finally, um, with regards to the city historian, I had the pleasure of working with Mr. Scontris for three years on the planning board. During that time, I was always impressed at how much that man brought to our group, institutional knowledge. Um, such detail with applications that would come before us. And it was with a very heavy heart that I learned about a year ago that he would be leaving the board because I felt like I had so much more to learn from him. 
Now, I wasn't fortunate enough to have Mr. Scontras as a, as a teacher during my tenure at Saco Middle School, but he was there at the same time, and uh, one of his children was about the same age. And I watched over the years the, the love of our community, the importance of fabric of, of family time and community and commitment that the Scontras family has for the, for the betterment of Saco. Um, so when I had the opportunity to, to learn and kind of understudy from him on the planning board, it was like I felt like I had so much more to, to learn. Um, and then I received the news that the mayor had promised him a position of city historian, which obviously is one of his passions and something he's very good at. Um, like I said, he brought tremendous detail to many applications that were before us. So I would really hope that the councillors would find a way to make sure that Mr. Scontras receives the appointment of the city historian. He's a, a wonderful gift to our community um, and would, uh, would do us all proud in that position. And I think it would be a great way for him to be able to continue to give forth information to both council and planning board as details come forward. I'm not sure how many times he would have talked about the use of a particular site on the industrial base and, oh, red flag, there might be some possible contamination there, or, oh, red flag, there might be some historical artifact value there, all things that we were responsible for reviewing on the planning board. So um, if you would, for, for the betterment of our community, please appoint Mr. Scontras. Thank you. Thank you. Any further? Folks like to speak to council? Okay, moving on from public comment to uh, item seven, approval of the minutes for February 28th and March 7th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Councilor McPhail, is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Hatch, any discussion on the minutes? Roll call vote on the minutes. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Brings us to item eight, consent items. There are two items. Item A, approve April council dates, and item B, con confirmation of city administrator to the Biddeford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit Board. Is our motion to approve the consent items? So moved. Councilor Gunn, is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Berman. Any discussion? Roll call vote on the consent agenda. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. <clears throat> Brings us to item eight, or excuse me, item nine, action items. Uh, we have item A, a first reading authorization of funding through a school revolving renovation fund program, $771,020 grant and $756,054 bond. At 0% interest, page four in your packet, and that is Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Maine Department of Education has awarded funding of $1,527,074 to the Saco School Department for Health, Safety, and Compliance Improvements to Saco Middle School, Middle School Exterior Doors and Bathroom and ADA Accessibility, and Governor John Fairfield School Exterior Doors and Indoor Air Quality. 50.49% of the loan is forgiven via a grant. 49.51% is repaid over 10 years at zero interest. Be it ordered that the City Council approve the first reading of the following order in substantially the same form as presented. Order authorizing the City of Saco to accept a school revolving renovation fund grant up to $771,020 and to issue zero interest bonds in an amount not to exceed $756,054 both under a $1,527,074 loan agreement with the Maine Bond Bank and providing for health, safety, and compliance renovations at Saco Middle School and Governor John Fairfield School, and further move to schedule a public hearing on the order for April 11th, 2022. I move to approve the order and the public hearing schedule. Motion's been made by Councilor McPhail. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Berman. Any discussion? Councilor Berman. Thank you. Uh, I'm supportive of this. I think any chance that we have to borrow money at zero interest 
uh, as well as have the state pay for half of important projects is an opportunity not to be missed. I'd also remind anyone listening that although uh, the current school construction project may end up replacing Governor John Fairfield School, we will have that school for at least another five years while that process carries on, uh, perhaps even longer. Uh, so this isn't a, a short-term investment. It's an investment in the long term. Thank you. Councilor Johnston. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions. So I'm not sure if the superintendent can answer these, or, or perhaps this is for bond counsel or, or the finance team. Um, I mean, as, as Councilor Berman just uh, stated, you know, we're obviously going to have this school for at least another five years. Uh, so it, obviously, if there's needs, it would make sense we'd spend some funds on those needs. Uh, the, the questions I have is, by accepting these funds, grant, and the bond, uh, do we know what impact that may have on what we can do with this school building in the future? So what I mean by that is, you know, we, we all know that we're, we're talking about consolidation. Um, I assume that the state understands that too. Uh, I, I don't know if you're, you're dealing with two different elements of the state. Um, but I, I would hope that you know, we wouldn't be told if we go through this process, we go out and we borrow this money and we get this bond, and then they kind of tell us that, well, you can't consolidate because you know, we've borrowed money. Um, and then that second question, again, about the, how long, I mean, it's a 10-year loan, so my concern is that in five years we move into a new school and then there's a period of five years where we're sitting on a school building uh, and we can't do anything with it because we borrowed money. And I don't know if that's factual or not. I'm just, I know that there's, myself included, uh, a good segment of the population in Saco that would like to see Fairfield restored to the park. And so, again, if this is going to create a hiccup, uh, I think maybe we'd be better off trying to find another way to fund it. Thank you. Okay, so let me, let me answer couple of those questions individually. So the first piece is what we're, what you're approving here tonight is just, or, or to move it forward, is just to get it on the ballot uh, so that we can, as the, as the citizens can make a, a selection that um, in June. The second piece is that just because we vote to authorize the spending of the money, I believe that we would want to have a lot of conversation about what happens on the elementary school side. Uh, you know, Mike mentioned we may still be there for five years, which, yes, we will be there for five years. But that will be a conversation of whether we move ahead with that section of the project for that school. Uh, when you look at the doors at $55,000, that is definitely a need that has to happen. Uh, the ADA piece is there, but I think that would warrant further discussion about what may be next for all of our buildings. Either way, it won't limit any of our ability to make decisions about new construction whatsoever. So um, just an example is that in, that in the other community of Biddeford, we had a revolving renovations um, grant that we got the award like two weeks before we shut down schools for COVID. And we had approved the projects in the budget, but because of the COVID situation, one, the price went up so much, and number two, you couldn't get people to work on that. So we just had to let some of those just not uh, happen, and it's just deducted off your amount of what you borrowed uh, when you when you threw up. So you, you have no worries about uh, taking this and having any uh, the state limit any of your uh, other projects as you move forward. If you did do the work for Fairfield School, and let's say it close someday or whatever, you would be on the hook for repaying your portion of the loan. Thank you. Councilor Archer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, don't think, I, I liked Councilor Johnson's question, and I, my brain went somewhere else, so I just want to confirm. I think what he was asking is, is if we do not use it the way it was intended, for example, you build all the, you drop $250,000 in renovations to the school, and then in six years, uh, we tear it down or we do something with it, that there's no penalties. So if you think of federal bonds that we've dealt with in the past, there's many, many restrictions. And we're just trying to make sure 
that we're not on the hook to then have to pay back the unforgiven or the forgiven amount because we're not following certain rules that they. I could I can follow up on that, but as that is not my understanding. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McPhail. Thank you. Now you just stated. Um, so if we go through and let's say you know it's passed, we get the funds. If we go through and start and we look at something and say, okay, well, Fairfield, we don't need the doors right now. That money cannot be used against something else. Correct. It would have to be Correct. given back. The only, the only way that we can uh, spend funds that have state support behind it is on these four different approved projects. Okay. So we couldn't you know, say, oh, well, we want to spend 55 on whatever uh, windows. These are specific projects that's been approved by the DOE. Um, to meet the needs in those buildings. And you stated the money would just be given back and then deducted from Correct. the total loan amount. So they wouldn't give us the 50% the and mm -hmm. we wouldn't be making a payment for that line item. Any further questions? Thank you, Superintendent okay, thank Ray. You. Any further discussion? A roll call vote. Council Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnson? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. <clears throat> Brings us to item B a first reading petition for zoning text amendment to Chapter 230, Table 41, Dimension Standards, page 9 in your packet, and that is uh, Councillor Purdy. My petition, Alex Fabish is requesting the city consider amending chapter 230 subsection 41 table 41 dimensional standards for the downtown zone minimum lot area per dwelling unit the petitioner requests to lessen the minimum standard from 1500 square feet to 600 square 650 square feet Fabish is the current owner of 63 store street that's map 38 lot 43 63 Store Street is a 0.29 acre property currently conditioned as a mixed use building with commercial space on the ground floor and eight apartments on the upper floor. In October of 2020, Fabish expressed interest in converting the vacant first floor commercial space into four residential units, making for a total of 12, 12 units. However, the addition of the proposed units is not in compliance with the minimum lot area per dwelling unit dimensional standard. Because of this, Fabish sought a contract zone in May of 2021. The contract zone ultimately failed to receive a positive recommendation because it did not meet the criteria necessary to warrant a contract zone. Fabish now seeks an amendment to the zoning ordinance to lessen the minimum, minimum standard from 1,500 square feet per dwelling unit to 650 square feet per dwelling unit. The petition was reviewed by the Planning Board at its January 4th, 2022 and February 2nd, 2022 meetings. Staff made recommendations to lessen the standard based on numerical values represented in other city zones, as well as those standards of compatible or comparable uh, neighboring towns. Planning staff recommendations of a lessened minimum are supported by the comprehensive plan. The planning board motion to lessen the standard had a split vote three to three, and therefore a negative recommendation is forwarded to the council. The city council hereby approves the first reading of the chapter 230 subsection 41 table 41 dimensional standards downtown zone minimum lot area per dwelling unit amendment and further moves to schedule a public hearing on March 28, 2022. Motion has been made by Councillor Purdy, is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Gunn. Discussion? Councillor Archer? Uh, yes, I also do agree that, again, we did spend uh, more than six figures on, this, on the Zores throughout the process through consultants, and here we are uh, pretty much trying to overrule what was the committee that brought to us just two years ago. Um, I think this shouldn't have even been brought up. Um, I'm, I'm going to be voting this down today. Just on the mere fact of one, you've got a planning board giving a negative recommendation, and two, we just went through a two-year process with significant resources being spent. 
identifying that this was not what the Zores committee wanted. So just wanted to reiterate that. Further discussion? Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we discussed the last meeting on this, you know, I do believe in the density changes to the downtown. But based on this, and, and more so the negative record, the tied vote, which equals a negative recommendation from the planning board, just shows that they were not in agreement as well. And I do not believe that this has been fully looked at based on what the Zors had presented us. Um, and again, this, this point right now for me too as well, I believe that at some point this does need to be looked at, but now is not the time. Councilor Hatch. Uh, I would uh, echo agreement with my uh, the first two councillors' opinions uh, and suggest even further, when you look at the negative vote from uh, the planning board, I made this comment the last time this came up. Um, we only have uh, three uh, members of the planning board who were around during the Zor's process. One of them was absent the night of the meeting, and two of the three negative votes came from the two remaining uh, planning board members who were part of that ZORS process, uh, in my view, uh, out of respect to the comments that were just made here of the process that led to the 1500. Uh, I, I'm, you know, like many others, I'm in favor of re revisiting an increased density uh, for the downtown zone. I just think it needs to be done with more discipline and, uh, and more vetting um, to, to allow this to happen. Uh, with a, with a single property owner request, I think is, is short-sighted on our part. And, uh, and also, I would, if we're going to revisit this, uh, it would be my hope and suggestion that we revisit the increased density in concert with a comprehensive look at affordable housing here in, in, the, in the city, which uh, you know, is, is definitely part of the comp plan, but requires a much uh, broader view uh, so I, uh, I would not be in favor of moving forward uh, under these uh, circumstances. Thank you. Councilor Berman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I find this to be a, a somewhat difficult issue. Uh, well, I agree with the comment, sorry, I agree with the comments that the Zores Committee underwent extensive study, and I also understand the Planning Board is forwarding us a negative recommendation, and I, and I also wish, uh, or I'm concerned about the idea of a petition uh, making a large change in our downtown zone. Uh, I also understand that we're in the midst of a housing crisis, that housing prices are through the roof, it's impossible uh, for young families, young couples, young people to find housing in the Saco Biddeford area that's anything like affordable, and that's primarily a supply and demand problem. I also understand that if we're going to solve that problem, that's going to mean new development. And if we're going to have new development that doesn't contribute substantially to a traffic problem, that means additional development downtown. Uh, so in general, I'm, I'm highly supportive of increasing the density downtown uh, and believe that's, that's the only way that we're going to get a handle on our housing crisis by creating a livable community and units within walkable distance to services downtown, especially where there's already sewer and water. And that will boost the economic development and job growth and commercial growth that we need to offset the higher property taxes uh, that are concerning to so many residents. And so in front of me, I have a plan that seeks to accomplish some of that and make use of vacant space, and that's very attractive. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I agree with the concerns uh, that it's not been fully vetted, and that's uh, making large changes at the request of one uh, following a negative planning board recommendation is uh, to be taken seriously. So I find myself on the fence. Thank you. Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, and I said what I said about this two weeks ago. And really, not much has changed. I mean, I, I certainly am still supportive of the concept as I was during the Zores process. But I mean, it seems fairly loud and clear from members of the public and, and other members I've spoken to in my ward and in this zone in particular that, you know, it needs to be. Uh, further vetted, um, you know, I myself have concerns when you do a blanket change like this, how it impacts other things such as parking, uh, which until we address those in a cohesive manner, it seems 
uh, problematic to me from where I stand um, going about this. You know, I, I did a couple weeks ago, whenever it was we last met, uh, came up with what I thought was a, a reasonable approach to at least the short-term solution to this. And uh, again, I'm happy to work with the city administrator to you know, bring that about instead of doing a blanket change to the entirety of the zone. Thank you. Thank you. Any Councilor Purdy? Thank you. Um, where I read this into the record and made the motion, my understanding is I can't, I can't really talk against it according to our rules. Um, so I'll, I'll tread carefully here. I, um, my, I'm in support of lessening the, the square footage for downtown. I think we need to seriously look at that. Um, but I'm uncomfortable, as I said a couple, I made my comments a couple of weeks ago and I'll let those stand, I guess. I'd like to see the, the 650 square foot dimension is based on a program that doesn't exist in our city. So what I would say is if the city staff planning department would like to bring a program such as that to us, I'd like to have that discussion and, and work on some of the, the parking issues and whatnot as well. Um, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Councilor Archer? No. Councilor Purdy? No. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? No. Councilor McPhail? No. Councilor Johnston? No. A motion passes 5 2. <clears throat> excuse me, motion fails 5 2. That brings us to item C, a first reading, budget amendment number six, wage and comp implementation, page 33 in your packet. That is Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the city of Saco approved the wage and comp compensation study in 2021. Since then, Human Resource Department has worked to analyze ex existing wages and prepare recommended adjustments in line with the results of the wage and compensation wage scales. This budget amendment increases affected departmental lines to reflect wage changes for the remainder of the fiscal year. Staff recommends approval. Be it ordered that the council approve the first reading of budget amendment number six and further set the date for the final reading to March 28, 2022. I move to approve the order. Second. Motion has been made by Councillor Johnston, second by Councillor Archer. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Brings us to item D, one reading, authorization to send dredge letter of support to York County officials, page 35 in your packet. And that is Councilor Berman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, ARPA funds are available through York County and could be used to fund regional dredge equipment. Neighboring municipalities and elected officials have shared their support of this purchase. York County commissioners will be voting in April on the funding request. Be it ordered that City Council authorize sending a letter to uh, to the York County Commissioners, encouraging them to support funding dredge equipment using ARPA funds. Motion has been made by Councilor Berman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor McPhail. Any discussion? Councilor Berman? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for those who listened to or attended uh, SOS Saco Bay's conference today, you're aware uh, that the problem we have on the coast is, is one of sand movements. Sand moves. That's what it does. Water moves it. In a healthy, undisturbed ecosystem, the sand would move northward uh, in Saco Bay and then would be replenished by the water coming down the Saco River. But the man-made structure of the jetty stops that sand from replenishing Camp Ellis, but it doesn't stop the sand from moving northward along Saco Bay, causing that erosion. The solutions that we're planning to fix that 
whether it be uh, option six, the jetty spur with the Army Corps of Engineers, or perhaps the living shoreline solution of using these wave attenuation devices, neither one of those solutions changes the fundamental fact that sand is going to move north along Saco Bay, leaving erosion. They hope to slow the erosion, holding sand there for longer, but no responsible plan will stop that movement altogether. Otherwise, you'll just pass the erosion problem down the coast. Whatever solution we implement will require the replenishment of sand along Saco Bay. Thus, it's exciting that we have an opportunity with different levels of government coming together to solve those problems. This dredge provides the source of that sand replenishment that when used in concert with the Army Corps of Engineers solution or the Living Shoreline Solution solution, could provide uh, a long-term fix to that region, providing stability and support and, and ending the chronic erosion that we're facing. And so I, I just strongly urge us to move forward with this. I think it's a necessary step of a multi-part process that will eventually fix the problem at Camp Ellis. Thank you. Any for Council Archer? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also uh, do agree with Council Berman. Um, however, I also want to add that I see it as an investment. Um, currently, every year, we spend about $250,000 on sand. Um, we're adding it to there, so it's a annual year-to-year -year cost of ours. Um, I see, again, sharing the cost. I don't see the full totality purchase of the dredge for solely Saco. Um, I do see a potential benefit from the investment perspective in which we can reduce certain costs that we already have and use those funds to actually help with the maintenance. Um, if I also remember correctly, it was 25 years before we had that dredged, and we can't wait 25 years. So this, um, us having a communal dredge can help uh, bring those services in a lot faster than the federal government has in our past. So that's why I'm interested in this interest, uh, letter of interest. I still need a lot more details before I talk about funding it, but uh, that will come in time. Any further discussion? Councilor Johnston. Thank you. Uh, two previous councilors really summarized it very well. Um, but again, I was also thinking along the same lines as Councilor Archer, um, particularly where you know this is a kind of a win-win where we have the channel, the river, that had took 25 years to actually finally get dredged again. Um, that really isn't supposed to be done every 10 years, I believe. So you know we're able to maximize the use from dredging the river and opening that up for both the commercial fishermen, the commercial uses, plus the, the recreational side of things, um, while at the same time using that sand to then nourish the beach. So to me, like my fellow counselor said, it, it seems like a win-win situation. You know, I'm, I'm certainly supportive of it and how we go about funding it, we'll, we'll figure out. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, roll call vote. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hanch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. That brings us to item E, a public hearing, comprehensive plan 2022 to 2034 adoption, page 37 in your packet. That is Councilor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. After more than a year of data collection, public meetings, and online engagement, the city's consultant has prepared a draft of SACO's updated comprehensive plan. SACO's comprehensive plan establishes the basis for making strategic city policy, project, and budget decisions by articulating a vision for the future and outlining the goals, objectives, and strategies to achieve it. It also provides the rationale and legal support for zoning, impact fees, and other regulations that guide or restrict development in the community. To facilitate this, the plan articulates goals and strategies that are to be implemented via decisions made by city staff, the planning board, and city council within time frames which reflect the community's expressed priorities for the future. The planning board forwarded a, a positive recommendation of the draft plan with changes to the land use map and implementation matrix after holding public hearings on January 18th and February 1st. I move to open the public hearing. Motion's been made by Councilor Purdy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Berman to open the public hearing. Any discussion? 
Roll call vote to open the public hearing. Council Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Open the public hearing passes 7-0 at 727 p.m. If there's anyone who would like to address the council on the comprehensive plan, uh, please come forward and be heard. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm David Plavin. I live at 2 Surf Street in Saco. Um, well, I have no real um, beef against the plan. I do ask that we keep um, the beach and the coastal area in the forefront. I think it's a, uh, an enormous economic possibility and, and revenue generating area for the city of Saco. And I'm a little concerned that sometimes that it gets pushed to the back instead of, you know, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't concentrate on Main Street or other areas. I know it's, it's all important, but I want to make sure that, um, you know, while resiliency and sustainability are nice words, nicer words would be a structure in the bay that would keep the waves to a minimum so we can actually get on with developing the beach, making it more vital. Um, we all know, and we all know what it means to us, and um, whether it gets reworded in the council. The, other, the only other thing that I... I think is important too is that um, I know it's a, only goes out to 2034, but that we develop some sort of long-term plan to, you know, with all the environmental um, hazards that we face, that we have a long-term plan as to how we're going to maintain these beaches for years to come. I think we can't afford to lose them, and um, it's it's to me it's very important. We have Camp Ellis and we have uh, the Ferry Beach Retreat as two great areas of potential and if we can revitalize them then i think it'll be a huge benefit to the city thank you thank you anyone else like to speak during the public hearing on the comprehensive plan hi again it's kelly archer 185 bradley street um i def i agree with the previous speaker, as far as the sustainability, the economics, um, not just to save our shores and protecting it, but the environment and bringing the, bringing the attention to our beaches, um, more so in the comp plan, I think is very important. And I also think, um, I want to thank our new city planner and his staff to come in after the two to three years that some of us have gone through and to be able to pick this ball up and bring us to today in front of you, kudos to the planning department. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on the comprehensive plan? Councilor Purdy. I move to close the public hearing and to schedule a final reading for March 28th, 2022. Motion has been made by Councilor Purdy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Hatch to close a public hearing. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote to close the public hearing. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion to close the public hearing passes 7 0 at 731. That is the last of the action items. Brings us to item 10. There is no new business this evening. Brings us to item 11, the administrative updates. City Administrator Canrath. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, beginning with Arts Commission uh, traffic utility boxes uh, in support of city beautification efforts, the newly formed Psycho Arts Commission launched uh, its first major initiative this winter a contest to create art for three downtown traffic light boxes, or utility boxes. Uh, this project creates a harmonious combination of art and essential services and provides a great opportunity to make functional objects visually appealing and vibrant in downtown Saco. Uh, the commission invited artists to submit a digital art file to be printed and wrapped around three downtown traffic light boxes located in Eastman Park, the intersection of Water Street and Main Street, and on Saco Island. In late February, three winners were selected. Thornton Academy students, Caitlin Rodriguez, Riley Sullivan, and Abigail Fox. Uh, congratulations to our winners, those three. Um, their artwork can be viewed on the Art Commission's uh, webpage on the city's website, uh, and they are expected to be installed on the traffic utility boxes uh, this coming April. 
Uh, an update on some document management initiatives. I've recently formed a city staff committee to begin looking at solutions uh, for the very large volume of documents and records we're required to keep here on the City Hall campus. Our storage space here between City Hall and the Annex has reached a breaking point and we must look at storage and um, record retention alternatives. So this may include uh, implementing an electronic document management system in conjunction with a scanning project uh, where documents could then be searched and retrieved in that database. But the time has come uh, with the amount of storage space we have in this building in the annex and also just some of the structural integrity uh, concerns uh, in the attic and other pieces of this building that um, we are going to be looking at some other alternative storage um, uh, functions for the years to come. Uh, lastly, just an RFP bid opportunity. The city of Saco is seeking proposals from individuals uh, and or companies who employ individuals who meet the minimum National Park Service professional qualification standards and 36 uh, CRF 61 for architectural history to conduct a reconnaissance level architectural survey of Camp Ellis. Additionally, the city seeks those with experience in developing resiliency recommendations for historic homes that may be at risk in the event of severe weather experiences. Camp Ellis, located at the southern uh, southeast tip of the, of the Saco, uh, southeast tip of Saco at the mouth of the Saco River, is a residential district and coastal commercial development in use uh, as early as 1866. Home to some of Saco's uh, oldest buildings, it is a historically uh, significant fishing village and textile port now threatened by severe weather experiences and coastline degradation. Uh, proposals uh, will be accepted until 11 a.m. on April 29th. Proposals should be electronically submitted to Molly Kirchhoff, Assistant Planner at mkirchhoff, K-I-R-C-H-O-F-F, at socomain.org with the subject line RFP Camp Ellis, and there will be a public opening, of course, of all proposals received at that time. Thank you. Thank you, City Administrator Kenrath. Any questions? No questions. Moving on to item 12, Council Discussion and Comment. Any Council Discussion and Comment? Council Archer? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is... Uh, I want to propose this to the, the mayor, the deputy mayor, and our city administrator. Uh, in, a, in the next couple meetings, or I know we're coming up to budget season, so we're going to be busy. Um, I'd like to, we, done it, we did it in a past administration, but what I'd like to do is go back to that informal school circle roundtable where we met over here and just talk about, um, we'll set aside the rules, get rid of for this one action item, no voting can happen. It's just us going over to the side. Uh, obviously in public and all that good stuff, but where we just have open discussions on what city council's views, agendas, goals are, um, so that we can just talk about affordable housing, planning issues, schooling, sidewalks, things like that. And again, just in a non-confrontational, just over there, get rid of Robert's rules, no voting, and just honest discussions happening in a school circle type setting, um, in which we can just have open debate, open discussions. Again, no actual business, just communication. That's all I'm asking. And we have done this in the past under past administrations. So, thank you. Any further council discussion, Councilor Gunn? I just want to. This is the first I'm hearing of it, and um, honestly, while I do like the idea of having new business, you know, from the dais, though, so everything is happening in public and everybody sees it at the same time, having to sit around a counter, uh, table and kind of hash some things out, because legally that's the only way we can do it. Though, if more than three of us get on an email chain then technically it's a meeting and technically it's forbidden, although it has happened in the past and that's why I never participate in some of those uh, discussions. So, but be that as it may, uh, be able to sit around with all the counselors present, kind of hash these things out, um, maybe get a lot with each other sometimes though because there are some issues on here that, uh, uh, especially tonight, um, as it relates to um, co future of contract zones, um, the quote-unquote promise of uh, giving the city historian position to somebody, which I was never under that impression when I voted to formalize that job. So there are some things that we need to discuss as a council that definitely meets a format that perhaps the, uh, the old-timey sort of workshop um, might be a benefit to everybody in the situation. And uh, I would, I'd have to associate myself with uh, Councilor Archer and say I think at least for one-off, uh, it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Any further, Councillor Hatch? Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Uh, I would uh, agree with Councillor Mar Marshall's um, efforts. Uh, however, if, if we aren't able to do that, uh, I, I am having some uh, concerns about our inability to get items uh, on our agenda. Um, 
as you know, on, on our, at our uh, February 28th council meeting, after we adopted our council goals, I promised to submit my top four goals, I'm sorry, top three goals uh, with, of the 12 that were approved uh, to City Administrator Canerath, which I, I did on March 4th, uh, and I actually prioritized those uh, to him and articulated why I thought they were priorities, at least in my, my own mind. Um, I also submitted a list of action plans to accomplish the goals in hopes that that might generate some conversation. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, that my fellow counselors have done the same or will very soon as I did challenge us all to do that. And I'm assuming uh, that if a majority of the counselors identify the same action item combined with similar public input on that same action item, the issue will be placed on the city council agenda for us to, uh, to take action. Uh, I'd like to uh, engage in the process of action, not inertia, as, uh, as soon as possible. You know, the, our constituents, the same ones who elect us to serve, are justifiably restless and are losing patience with us. And successful progressive organizations, including government bodies, provide responsive leadership and create action plans. Otherwise, they get stuck in what I view as a constant state of inertia. I'm not interested in the latter and I don't think our constituents are either. So I would really encourage us to take action either way, informally, formally, whatever it takes to get, uh, get things moving forward. Thank you. Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Um, well, first, I agree with Councillor Hatch's comments. And since we're on this, this topic of agendas, I'll just say that I, I suggest that the City Council reach out to the administrator as of Friday, he has a legal opinion on who controls the agenda in the city of Saco. Uh, it's not unilaterally through the mayor. So again, our requests need to start coming before council, and I'm now going to rely on the city administrator to ensure that that happens. Thank you. Any further council discussion or comment? Uh, just for the record, uh, for those of you who weren't uh, on the council and, and maybe hadn't been paying attention. Uh, the previous administration held off on a blasting ordinance that I submitted in March and they didn't put it on an agenda until October. People's homes were being destroyed. Their foundations were being cracked. Yet the item wasn't important enough to take up for that amount of time. We have to remember that we have limited resources as a city. And there are a lot of things going on. It's budget time. Contract zones are important. Yes, they are. But there's no problem with the contract zones at the moment. At the moment, there's no contract zone that's, that's coming before council to be concerned about during budget time and during some of these other comprehensive plan issues. Remember that when you put something on the agenda and you take action, that puts, something, that puts something into motion that then staff has to take time to deal with. And remember, any change to the zoning ordinance, then you put more pressure on the planning board because it has to go through them for any kind of review process. So adding contract zones to the planning board's agenda right now when they just went through comprehensive plan, when you've asked them to speed up the process on uh, M uh, MDR, when, we, when the, the marijuana zoning ordinance is going through, you know, the, plus the multitude of applications that they just have to see. I mean, we just have to be kind of remind ourselves sometimes that there's only a certain amount of time in the day for city staff to work on the multitude of issues that are going on. But we are progressing. For those that say we aren't, we are. We're moving things through the process uh, and things are getting done. Uh, so maybe again, government moves slowly, but we are getting things done. It just might not be as fast as some people would like. But just rem remind ourselves, there, there's, no, there's no process hiccup here it's just prioritizing events as they come up. So this isn't, this isn't a political issue. 
that it's being made out to be. It's merely just process. So, again, Council Archer. So yes, Mr. Mayor, and I'm just basing off based because you just brought it up is that we have to prioritize what comes on the floor. So then why did we have to deal with the current zoning text amendment action item B today, which didn't even make it, it was killed 5-2, and it didn't even make it to the public hearing. So again, it's more about prioritization and recognizing, oh, this, is, this might be more valuable than the other one, because this didn't even make it to the next stage. But right. it had to go through all the processes with the lower committees. It was a petition by an applicant that goes through the process that is the city ordinance. But it doesn't it is have going to come through. to us. It's it has to come to you for review, and you guys voted it down at first reading. That's the process. It's a petition by an applicant. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, it's not something that we're bringing forward as far as a, a new idea or a new concept. It's an, an actual petition by an applicant that has to go through the process. It, it's different Again, than if it's a new idea that we were so bringing forward is, under new business. Sorry, but this is Councillor. I've always known this to be council discussion. This is where we. This is our time where we can um, say how we feel and things like that. But again, it was a negative recommendation from the planning board. It did not have to come to us. It did not have to have all this staff time. Again, I'm I'm just picking this one out because we just did it, and that's why. And it was in response to how you brought it up. But it really confused me on this because here we are. Just I don't want to call it wasting time. We went through a process. Yes, but. Again, this was just ag agreed upon two years ago. So we could have put these efforts in this time somewhere else. And, and that's all I'm going to say. I'll end it here. But again, this is what just happened. So I would just remind the council, for those that weren't present, the planning board unanimously voted down convenient MD's contract zone. However, the council uh, actually approved it in a 4-3 vote. But it was unanimously voted down by the planning board. We just have to be mindful as we look through this that we are all in this together and we have to uh, prioritize the city needs. I don't appreciate the lecture, first of all. That's not your role. Second of all, I don't think anybody's asking for anything outside of the administrator who has been supportive of some of these items, getting them on the agenda, that have been denied access by you, Mr. Mayor. That's what we're, talk That's what we're talking about. That's it. So that's a false I mean, I assertion. Understand. That's a false assertion. I haven't blocked I'm, anything from getting on an agenda. Okay. Well, are you calling somebody a liar? Any further council discussion and comment? Councilor Gunn. I would just uh, to follow up with uh, Councilor Archer. I can understand his frustration. Uh, the way I approached it, well, yes, well, it was technically a negative recommendation. Looking, um, yeah, because it was three three. Um, but at the same time, when I approached it with an open mind, it was, I saw 3-3, three, three, yeah, planning board voted it down, but the staff said, hey, this might be something, and they recommended it because it was simply in line with the comprehensive plan. And that's why I considered it you know, worthy enough of our attention. Now, that being said, I, and I often explain this to people, that as a, as a body, we are essentially reactionary, not in the negative sense, but in the sense that things come to us rather than think we seek out things. Like, for example, the, um, the ch change the zoning tonight, though. Well, that wouldn't have even, we wouldn't have randomly in August said, hey, you know what we should do? Um, really revisit that, uh, that rezoning of the downtown, though, so it's within uh, the comprehensive plan to get some more density in there, because what's the point of having a comprehensive plan if you can't actually act on it, though, because... You know, as I said, that's way of a comprehensive plan, though. So, I mean, it's not like it would have been a contract zone for one person. It would have been a contract zone for everybody. And uh, I, I recall Councillor Johnson's, um, the idea that maybe if we had talked about it further, maybe an overlay district or something like that, something that maybe would have been a little bit more fair to everybody. I mean, that's why I voted yesterday night, just to see if we could get it passed and maybe have some more discussion on it, though. But it's, you know, we deal with these things like uh, the comprehensive plan, which... Some people think are very esoteric, and some people think are militant. You have to follow it, though. And at the same time, you know, they say, you know, comprehensive plan, it's open to interpretation. But then contract zones are like, well, oh, those are like the Bible. It's like we spent so much time on it, though, that 
there is no possibility that in 18 months that anybody could have gotten something wrong, but at the same time, we have a comprehensive plan that says we need to have a denser downtown district. And we have a contract zone that everybody wants to say, we spent so much time on it, you did a wonderful job on everybody involved, but we just want to leave it static to wait and see. But wait and see for what? I mean, we have comprehensive plans every 10 years, and if nothing's going to be done, then it's just a piece of paper that's forced on us by the state and has no real meaning, though. So I like us to, I mean, this is something like if we ever get in a conversation like, like you recommended, like having the old-timey sort of a workshop, we can kind of hash these things out in terms of, you know, where we actually want to go. I mean, what's the actual debate? I mean, are some people using contract zones as an excuse to not develop? Or are some people using comprehensive plan as the ability to develop? I mean, that seems to be the, the, the general sort of political division in this city that we're seeing right now. And, there's, and both sides have valid arguments. But if we don't, if we don't look long term and we don't sort of like just make excuses to kick the can down on the road, I mean, like when people were saying uh, earlier, you know, things haven't been vetted. Well, vetted for what? I mean, we vetting for people who are against the, you know, any development or vetting for people that are for development. So I mean, I'm not for talking in code or anything. I I'm been I'm been, been very upfront about being pro development in the areas of the town, whether it's downtown, whether it's in my ward war three on the Route One stretch, places where it's appropriate that could be an economic engine for the city. And I'd like to see some talk about that because just, you know, leaving it up to contract zones and comprehensive plan discussion, we're basically just, we're using those as sort of uh, red herrings to sort of say what we are for and what we're not for. And it's frustrating, I know it's frustrating to the audience, and it's frustrating as a counselor because, you know, I'd like to see us actually do some concrete things. And I'm just getting a whole bunch of, uh, I can feel the blowback, you know, when it goes one way or the other. So it's a little frustrating, but as you can see, this is like the, hopefully the type of conversation we will have in an actual kind of formal workshop though, because at least we can work some things out though and how we actually feel, feel about things, you know, outside of specific issues though, which is really what we should be doing though, because public should know where we stand on things. I mean, they sent us here for a reason. That's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Any further council discussion and comment? Moving on to, there's no executive session tonight. That brings us to item 14, uh, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councillor Berman, is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Hatch. Any discussion? Roll call to adjourn. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes to adjourn 7-0 at 7.50. Have a great evening, everyone.